Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to do this in one take. Wish me luck. Uh, the object of today's video is to cover routing and DHCP and NAT and port forwarding on CentOS 7. Um, this is part of studying for the uh, RHCE exam, which I'm planning to take on January 8th, uh, and may be useful to participants in the RHCE study group. Um, I'm David Wilson from the Software Freedom School, and uh, well, like I said, I'm going to try to do this in one take. So, uh, click. A friend of mine told me that you guys would love to have a picture-in-picture picture of me, my ugly mug, uh, while um, I'm trying to do stuff. And uh, he said, in particular, the uh, look of pain when I run into unexpected results would be useful. Um, but you're not getting that today. Instead, you're just going to get this uh, one still. Um, Merry Christmas. And with that, I'm going to jump into the material that I have planned. I'm going to try to build a four-node network uh, where my uh, host machine is going to be one of the nodes. And uh, it's going to route uh, traffic through for... Um, for all of the nodes in various ways. Uh, this actually I built um, already once, and so I guess I'll do a really quick demo of that. Uh, router 1, Workstation 1, and Web App 1. Those are the ones I need. And I'll do a quick demo of what it is that I'm trying to build. Uh, and while, while those machines get started, I'll show you a picture from the GitLab repository and show you uh, which machines I'm trying to build there uh, in the graphic there. Oh, actually, let me do this. Uh, let me do this from my local machine because the, the quality will be a lot better. Um, it is in GitLab if you want to go ahead and uh, grab a copy of the materials that I'm using, uh, you can do that. Let me see here. The RHCE network map looks a little like this. Uh, the machines that I'm going to try to make are router, uh, web app, and station. And like I said, I've already done this once. Um, and then the fourth machine that I'm going to use to do testing will be my host, and it'll be over here connected on the bridge network. Uh, but that's not drawn into this picture. Maybe I'll add that later. Okay, so the machines are started up. Um, the first thing that, uh, the, the first goal, uh, or one of the, one of the goals, uh, that we want to have as we go along is, um, for the workstation to be able to browse the internet. And it should also be getting its IP address from the router. Uh, so, wired is connected, so we've got a, an, an address on that machine. Let's go to a terminal and see what the IP address is. It looks like I've been given 101, and it looks like my default route goes through 1010254. Uh, 10.10.10.254 happens to be router, uh, which we'll go and take a look at in a second. Um, so the first thing is, do I have numberly connection to the internet? Yes, I do. Do I have namely connection to the internet? Oh, surprisingly, no, I don't. Wait a minute. Um, Let's figure out, this is where I would be making uh, one of those unhappy faces. 
let's figure out why I don't have my connection. Is router one started? Maybe I didn't leave this quite as done as I thought I did, and I'll just abandon it and we'll uh, start over. Those are all my connections. And uh, I wonder if maybe Maybe the firewall didn't start. Nope, the firewall did start. So let's take a look at the uh, I think it's get active zones. That's the problem right there. Um, get active zones shows me that my um, main interface didn't go into the zone that it's supposed to go into. So I'll try to fix that really quickly and then um, finish the demo. Uh, so the thing that controls the zones is the content of these files here. And the one that I care about is IFCFG Internet. Um, did it start? Actually, let's see if it started. Maybe it didn't start. S3. Uh, S3 does not appear to have an IP address. So... Maybe Oh, I know what the problem is. Um, I'm trying to do this on wireless and bridged interfaces don't work as well on wireless as they do on wired. So hang on a moment. All right, so what you didn't get to see uh, was me connecting a physical wire to the host machine, which should allow the bridged interface on, uh, on router one to work better. So I'm just gonna keep, keep pressing on now. Uh, let's see here, get active zones. Hey, now I've got an exter external zone and my workstation should work correctly now. So let's try to ping namely. Uh, the name resolves and the ping resolves. If I can ping namely, then there's a darn good chance that I'll be able to browse the internet. So Google loads with their uh, Christmassy uh, picture there. Um, If you care about privacy, DuckDuckGo also loads. And so that's kind of the demo for um, Workstation 1. Uh, let's jump out of that and go to the... Um, we're not going to do anything with the web app, um, except maybe check that it can reach the internet. So web app 1 is a web server. It needs to be able to reach the internet, of course because otherwise it's not going to be able to answer any requests. So we're going to go straight to Namely on it. Names resolve and pings go. So this machine is also connected to the internet. Um, and since router one is uh, bridged, my host machine, which is, uh, like I said, going to be the fourth machine in this test network um, on that invisible um, physical section that I talked about, um, 
I should be able to browse to it. Uh, what is its IP address? Uh, the IP address is 73.148, so let's go to the browser on my physical machine and browse 192.168.73. What did I say? 148, I think. And that mess is actually the web from uh, Web App 1. I'll go ahead and prove that. On whoops, on web app one by changing the content. And let's see here. How about Happy Christmas? Does that work? Nope, I need hard quotes on that. Um, the, uh, the exclamation point makes me need hard quotes if I want to put in an exclamation point. Or I guess I could uh, uh, escape it. Okay, so there, it works with hard quotes. I'm gonna make that the content of my website. And there we go. Uh, it's asking for my password for the sudo. That should replace the content. Let's see if it works. We'll come back out here to the web browser. And look at that. All right. So this network um, is working, and this is going to be the final target. I'm going to tear it all down now and rebuild it all from scratch, hopefully relatively quickly. Again, uh, all, in, all in one take, if possible. Uh, if I run into too serious of problems, I'll break and do another take, but I... I well, you'll just have to take my word for the fact that I haven't done that yet. Um, so I'm going to remove these. Oh, I can't remove them when they're on. So power off. Yep, power them all off. And remove. Delete all the files. I don't need them anymore. Um, I don't need goofing around, but I also don't want to delete it in case I want to goof around with it later. So I'll just dive into the Software Freedom School group. And we'll get started. Um, actually, close that. Uh, we'll come to here. Uh, this is the document that you want to follow if you want to try this yourself, uh, or it's the document that I'll be following. Um, you may want to uh, do both. Uh, the only thing that I didn't put in here, I, I added some stuff to make it more interesting, like DHCP. Um, this is the requirement from the uh, Red Hat knowledge domains that I'm trying to satisfy with this exercise. Um, and I didn't add DNS. Uh, I may add that later. Um, but uh, somebody else signed up for DNS, and so I want to give them the uh, chance to do a video uh, like this one. I don't want to try to steal anybody's thunder. Anyway, uh, so we're going to try to use RHEL as a uh, broadband router. CentOS is close enough to RHEL. Uh, the, the differences are trivial. Uh, it makes CentOS a perfect studying platform. Um, we are going to be setting up DHCP, uh, not DNS. Um, even though I say DNS, we're actually not going to set that up. Um, NAT, routing, and uh, we're going to forward a couple of ports, although we're only going to test one. We're going to have three machines. Router 1, which is going to have three network interfaces, a bridged interface, uh, an internal interface on the DMZ network, and an internal interface on the corp network. Web App 1, which is going to have one network interface on the internal um, DMZ network, and Workstation 1, which is going to have one network interface on the internal corp network. Network configurations are going to be like this. Uh, the internet or the bridged interface is going to be unspecified. We're not going. We, it's we don't care uh, what kind of network that is because router one is going to get its configuration by DHCP. We'll read it later to do the test and to make sure that the port forward works, but we won't actually do any configuration of it or make any specifications about what that network needs to be. In my 
particular test, and I recommend this, uh, I'm going to be using a wired interface, and I'm going to bridge the machine to that wired interface. Uh, the DMZ network is going to be an internal virtual box network uh, for me, and its net, uh, network address is going to be 172.16.254.0, and it's going to have a 24-bit subnet. Uh, Router 1, importantly, is not going to provide DHCP on that network. And finally, the Corp network is going to be 10.10.10.0 uh, with a 24-bit subnet. And Router 1 is going to provide DHCP on that network. There's some more details here. I'm not going to uh, bother reading any more of this. Um, I'm going to start configuring machines. But I'm not going to start here at this shell. I'm going to start by building the machines in VMware. So I have a couple of pre-installed but not pre-baked um, machines here. And I'm going to use those images. Uh, so this, so this is a min base is a default minimal install of CentOS 7. I'm going to clone. I'm not going to clone uh, the machine directly because that gets current state. What I want is the base snapshot. Um, I base all my clones from this. That way I don't end up with extra snapshots that I don't want. So clone. And I need router 1 from this. It's going to be a linked clone. And I need to update the MAC addresses so that they're unique. Clone. Uh, so got router one. Uh, I'm going to need another clone of this one. Whoops, another clone of this one. This is going to be web app one. Again, it's a linked clone. Reinitialize the MAC addresses so that they're unique. And for this, uh, for workstation one, I want a GUI so that I can use a GUI web browser. Web browsing from the command line uh, is, is kind of painful, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go to GUI base, and I should probably rename this snapshot um, to uh, GUI base, but there. Now, I, now I'm pretty sure that I'm on the right box. Uh, again, it's going to be a linked clone. This one's going to be called Workstation 1, somebody's texting me, probably saying Merry Christmas. Um, God bless them, everyone. <laughs> um, Reinitialize the MAC addresses and clone. All right, so now that's got all my instances, right? But what I need to do now is I need to make sure that those instances are on the right networks. Uh, I'm going to configure two internal non-provisioned networks and connect my machines to them. I'm going to do the simple ones first. Workstation 1 goes to an internal network named Corp. Uh, because I've done this before, Corp already shows up. Um, interesting, it erases DMZ, but it never erases Corp. I wonder why that is. Um, anyway, uh, so Workstation 1 is on an internal network named Corp. And those are all the changes that I need to make to Workstation 1. Um, if you're working all off of one image machine or all off of one reference machine, you may want to boost the RAM on Workstation 1. I'm using two different reference machines, so my RAM is already pretty generous. Going to Web App 1, I need to change it so that it's on the DMZ network. Internal and... I'm going to put it on DMZ. And creating an internal non-provisioned network is just that simple. Just type the name of the network that you want to connect it to, and that's a, uh, the equivalent of creating a, a new distinct VLAN. So now coming to router 1, you'll remember that I said I was going to bridge its first interface. So we're going to bridge it. And it's going to be bridged to Ethernet 0. That's fine. Um, you can bridge to wireless, but it's a little less predictable. Adapter 2. I'm going to go 
uh, I'm going to have the adapters numbered as if I were going clockwise around uh, around this machine in a circle. So starting at the top, adapter one is bridged, and that's the one that I'm going to call internet. At three o'clock, we have the DMZ network. And it's appearing now because I have a machine sitting on it. Uh, so I'm going to connect this machine to that network as well. So router one and web app one will be on the DMZ network. Adapter three at six o'clock is going to be connected to an internal network of corp. Interesting. It didn't, it doesn't show up there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't know what the logic is there at all. Um, of, of when uh, networks appear and when they don't. All right, internal network of corp. Um, I need to make sure that this one is uh, the same. Um, let's check its settings really quickly. I just wanna make sure that I didn't accidentally cable this to something wrong. Nope, I didn't. My guess is that VirtualBox would be happier if I were putting um, both of these machines at adapter three instead of adapter um, instead of adapter one. Yeah, yep, that's my guess. Um, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to call it adapter one uh, on workstation one. And uh, because it is, it's it's the first adapter on workstation one. I'm not going to uh, put it on three, uh, even even though that would give me access to the cached network names. So have I got my network map well, there at 12 o'clock? That's my bridged interface here at three o'clock. That's my DMZ interface here at six o'clock. This is my corp interface, um, web app one, uh, 12 o'clock for it is um, the DMZ interface, station one, 12 o'clock for it, or uh, adapter one is the corp interface. So that is what I wanted. I've connected those three machines. Um, my fourth machine that I'll use for a final test is my host machine. So I'm going to start these machines. And because the reference machine is full screened, all the images come up full screened as well. All the instances is what I meant to say there. All right, and here's workstation one. Um, notice that workstation one is not connecting because router one isn't yet set up with DHCP and stuff. So this is my nothing up my sleeve. I'm gonna go ahead and log in, but I need to do it with the right network. Or right password is what I meant. Logging in on workstation one. Come on baby, log in, log in, log in for Papa. I sure do wish you'd re, uh, resize properly too, but um, I must have done something wrong with my uh, virtual machine extensions. Not going to care about that today. All right, so um, IP space A is very short for IP adder show, whoops, or show even. Um, and uh, so I've just gotten used to typing IP uh, A. Uh, which is also a good flavor of beer. Um, ENP0S3, no IP address. So I'm not going to get anywhere from this machine. I'm going to go ahead and set it aside for the time being. Uh, Web app 1. Web app 1 needs to be static. So I'm going to go ahead and give it its static IP address. Actually, I'm going to do one other thing with uh, workstation 1 now that I remember. Uh, the first things to do to any machine in when you're coming off of an image is to set the host name. 
So uh, I'm going to set the host name and reboot it. Uh, on this one, I'm not going to set the network interface to start automatically because I don't want it to start hard. I want it to start under network manager because this is a GUI uh, machine. So set host name. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Set host name for crying out loud in this do. Workstation one and I'll let that reboot off to the side. And while that reboots, I'll do the same thing to router one and web app one. Um, but with web app one, I'm going to go another step um, and give it its static IP addresses or IP address rather. Um, and I'm going to do this all in NM TUI. NM CLI is a little more hardcore. Uh, but I'll leave that to Rich Glazier because he's a hardcore guy, even though he root shells like a neck beard. All right, so I'm going to set my system host name. Nice that I can do it in here as well, right? Um, and my system host name is going to be webapp1. Dot, I've forgotten what I decided my network should be. Uh, let's go back over here. Uh, router one, what did I decide that my network name should be? SFS.test, okay. So coming back here, SFS.test, because this machine's not gonna get its network from um, DHCP. So I need to make sure that I set everything in here. Whoops. Um, edit a connection, gonna edit this one. And it's not going to be automatic. It's going to be manual because this is going to be a web server on a non-provisioned network. Um, and what did I say? 172.16.254.101 is where I want this one. And I need to specify it in CIDR notation. And I need to give a gateway, although this gateway is not going to be functional just yet. 254, 254. And DNS servers. Uh, I'm just going to give it one. And I'm going to use the Google DNS server. Actually, I'll give it both. Um, I'm going to use the Google DNS servers. And... Auto start. Okay. Notice that all those changes take effect uh, automatically and immediately. Um, so I gave it its uh, IP address. I set the connection to auto start and I set the uh, host name and I did all that from NM2E. Let's take a quick look at the uh, f one of the files that was changed by that. I have CFG ENP, that one there. Um, notice that on boot equals yes. Um, frequently I'll change that manually. And all of the other uh, settings that were put in automatically by NM2E and nice and neatly too, uh, kind of like that. We it also changes one other thing, which I think is interesting. So uh, Etsy host name is written by NM2E, and that's it. Um, so this one's going to get a reboot. And those are all the things that I need to do to web app one right now and I can get started on router one. Router one is like the others, gonna get a host name. First I'm gonna 
mark this message as read so we don't get chimed again. There we go. Sorry for that. Um, all right, so going into router one. First thing, set the host name. This will be such a help to you when you go to start doing some configs on something and uh, you see that the prompt has the wrong host name. Hopefully it'll stop you. Sometimes it stops me, sometimes Sometimes I don't stop in time. All right. Reboot the wrong server. So on this one, um, I want to do another thing. Uh, that is that I want to rename all the network interfaces before I reboot. So go in here, sysconfig. Um, Uh, the one that I care about is ENP, and I want to name that one to Internet. It's not started, so I don't have to do any, I don't have to stop it first. ENP. set it to start automatically. I'm going to leave it set for DHCP. So start automatically and that's the correct device and that should cover that. Let's see. Uh, wired connection one is the one that I want to rename to DMZ. I don't know for sure that this is all going to work out. The uh, renaming of interfaces has been, and, and, and in particular getting those files to stick at the right names, uh, has been kind of a, one of the things that I haven't quite figured out the rhythm of. Um, putting this machine at 254 on the DMZ network because it's router and I'm always going to put my router, especially my default router, at the very top of the network. Um, because this is a subordinate network, uh, I may have some routes off of it, but I definitely am not going to put my default gateway on it. My default gateway is going to be on my internet interface. DNS servers, same way. Um, I'm going to get those through DHCP on my internet interface. And I'm done with that network. Now this one should be corp. And it's also going to be manually configured. Uh-oh. I got them out of order. I just named uh, SS8 is supposed to be DMZ. Um, I don't know why this came up as a network inner network connection too. I think I better get a reboot in here. Um, I'll 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 name it and then I'll probably have to un untangle the mess. Let's see what comes up. One nine two. Whoops. No no no. Ten. 10, 10, remember 254. And always in CIDR, make sure that you put in the length of your subnet mask right after your IP address. No gateway, no DNS on this one either. It's a subordinate network. I'm getting my gateway and DNS 
on the internet interface. And this one, finally, is going to be called internet. And this is S3. And this one's going to also automatically connect. Right, I knew that was going to happen. Um, probably made a mess of these again. No, they don't look too messy. Uh, let's see here. This one is on. Which device is it on? I can't tell which device it's on. So I'm going to reboot and see if I've got pings because uh, I should have pings on web app from web app one to router one since they're both static IP. I should get pings between the two of them very early in the process. But I'm going to put a reboot in first just to uh, see what effect that has on my configuration file names. Sorry, this video is going to be long. Uh, it's what I get for being insufficiently scripted and making mistakes. You can just uh, thank my lack of technology that you don't have a picture in picture where you have to look at my sour face while I try to fix these things. All right. Let's see. Sys config. Network scripts, IFCFG, blah. Okay, the name stayed. Let's see if the IP addresses are right. Um, well, that one's not right. Uh, that's S8, and I want that configured for uh, the DMZ. So they're not going to be able to ping each other, is my guess. Um, so let's see, 172.16.254.101. Yeah, they can't ping each other. Um, I got my, I got my configs for my networks reversed. So I'm going to need to unreverse them. I made an assumption that network connection one was S8 and network connection two was S9, and that was not the case. So I set up this one as corp when actually it's DMZ. So I'm going to need to move this out of the way. I'll just call it temp. And we'll move this one to corp first. And we'll give it the right network. 10, 10, 10, 2, 5, 4. And we'll name this one to DMZ. Seventy two sixteen two five four two five four. Whoops, uh, right, twenty four. That's right. Let me double check this again. Two five four, yep. I name this one Internet. Now I have my names all in sync with what I want. Is that correct? Uh, IPA says this one is on the 73 network, which happens to be my, uh, my home network here. Um, what I'm gonna call the internet for this machine, because it does connect, uh, connect it to the internet. S8 connects to DMZ 
well, it will connect. It will connect to DMZ. It's got the wrong IP address right now, so I need to put these two down. So sudo if down enp zero s eight and nine and put eight up and put nine up and check my networks again. That's better. Okay, S8 is now on the DMZ network and S9 is now on the Corp network. Exactly what I wanted. So one more quick reboot. Make sure that everything comes up correctly. Um, I highly recommend that anytime you're uh, during the exam, as you are doing things, uh, you make sure that you reboot periodically so that you ensure that the configs that you're making are permanent and that they survive a reboot. A configuration that does not survive a reboot does not count toward your score during the exam. Uh, so let's see here, 73149, so my bridged interface is right. Uh, 17216, 254, 254, so my DMZ interface is right. And 101010, 10, 10, 254, so my corp interface is right. What's the next step? Uh, now that I've got these on the correct networks, um, router one, I configured that one. I put web app one on its uh, IP address. I've got workstation one with DHCP and it's right. Um, these things are will happen as we build along. And uh, let's see here. We got these networks correct. And... Now we're going to install DHCP. That this will give uh, Workstation One its network configuration. Oh, I should uh, just to show you that I've got this all correct. I should ping Web App One. Yay! It worked. So if I had uh, a lot of time, I'd go over to Web App One and um, ping back. But you can see the pongs right there, so we'll call that good. So yum dash y install DHCP. We're installing DHCP. <laughs> We're still installing DHCP. Installing, installing, installing. And DHCP is in. So now let's take a quick look at the uh, DHCP um, configuration. Oh, I can't, I can't cat that. Um, so here's, here's an interesting thing, right? I can't ls that. So I have to use sudo just to, just to ls that directory. So I want to take a look at that configuration duck on it, and. DHCP, DHCP, D dot, whoops, dot conf. What am I doing wrong here? DHCP, D dot conf. Oh, I can't spell. That's what I get for typing. Can't spell and I can't read either. Okay, um, so notice that the DHCP configuration file is basically dead empty when you start. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity to make a lot of syntax errors and fight with them for a really, really long time. But instead of taking advantage of that opportunity, um, and, and I probably shouldn't try to do sarcasm uh, uh, when you can't see my sarcastic face or my sarcastic waving hand. Um, 
uh, maybe I could do this. I could say sarcasm whenever I'm being sarcastic, but that would take extra time. So instead, I'm just going to be very literal and say that we're going to grab the dhcpd.conf.example and dump it into the config file and then clean it with an axe uh, and turn it into a real, very minimal DHCP configuration file that looks very much like that one right there. Um, so let's do that. Uh, so cat Etsy, no, not Etsy. Uh, what did they say? User share doc DHCP, and it's not the common. Um, I don't know actually what's in common. DHCPD.conf.example. So we're going to cat that, and we're going to use that sudo t trick again, and we're going to dump it into DHCP. DHC. Notice that I can't tab that out, so I have to type it. Uh, DHCPD.conf, excuse me. Uh, and that file pukes on the screen. And then we go in, grab the, grab the nearby axe, and go in and start editing some stuff. Um, we want these two lines, domain name and domain name servers. So uh, to dd, and down into the subnet definition. We're going to paste them right there because that's where I want them. I want them in the subnet definition. And I don't care about lease times. Um, the default lease times are fine, so I'm not going to put that in. I'm not going to do DDNS today, but I do need to make my D uh, DHCP server authoritative. So I want to delete from this line right here to the beginning of the file. So D, G, G. GG takes me to the beginning of the file. D starts the delete. Since it's a ranged command, that has the effect of deleting from there to the beginning of the file. X deletes that character. Um, I don't care about all this log facility crap. I don't care about all of this. So I am now going to delete all these lines from authoritative down to my section. Let's see. That looks like about 10 lines. Uh, no, it was not 10 lines, it was 12 lines, so get rid of that one as well. I like that little blank line there, it's pretty. Um, now I'm going to delete from here, delete to the end of the file, capital G. D, capital G, deletes from this line all the way through the end of the file. I like, since I started using Atom, to have a line return at the end of every file, so I'll drop that in there. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for a good programmer's editor, let me recommend Atom.io. It's awesome. So what's my network? It's 10, 10, 10. And does it, it doesn't have this subnet. It has this subnet. Uh, that's a 24-bit subnet. There are uh, 32 bits in every IPv4 address, which we represent as a dotted quad. Each one of these is called an octet, oct meaning eight. Uh, and so the, each, each dotted quad, or the, yeah, the dotted quad, the quad is a quad of octets. Uh, four sets of eight bits each, which gives you your 32-bit binary IP address. We represent it this way because it's easier for humans to digest. I'm going to give a range now. I want to give away IP addresses from 10, 10, 10, whoops, 10, 10, 10, 101 to 10, 10, 10, 199. There we go. And uh, I'm going to set myself as the router. You may remember that my IP address on the corporate network is 10, 10, whoops, 10, no, for fuck's sake, David Wilson, 10-10-10-254, um, and so that's there now, and our network name is sfs.test, so any machine that comes on is going to get a name in that domain, and we're going to put in DNS servers, 
I'm going to just use the Google public DNS servers because I'm not doing anything in particular with DNS, at least in this exercise. Um, further, further videos, I might do something with setting up a DNS forwarder or talk about how to do a DNS zone, but this particular one, I just need functional DNS servers and I only need resolution of names that are publicly available on the internet. So this should be a good DHCP configuration. Let's find out. Two capital Zs, saves and quits out of VI and sudo systemctl start dhcp how about dhcpd oh dhcpd seems better um, and now i'll status it and it says it's active and running and uh, gives me some information and i like that and it all looks good so i'm going to enable it if i don't enable it this is important. If I don't enable it, when I reboot, this box will come up with the DHCP server down. And if, if that happens during an exam, I won't get credit for correctly configuring uh, the DHCP server. Notice in the status command that DHCP discover, offer, request, and ACK have already gone one cycle, which means that there's already been a DHCP client that has made and gotten uh, a DHCP address. I'll bet that's workstation one. Let's go check on him. I wish I had some nice Mr. Rogers music. I would do some Mr. Rogers music. And then if I was doing post-production, I'd also cut in a little section of the uh, trolley. Uh, heading off to wherever it was that the trolley headed off to. And since I don't have those things, I'm just going to sign into Workstation 1 and see if he got an IP address. My guess is that he did. Um, oh, uh, by the way, that uh, is host F to go full screen uh, on my machine. Host is right control, which is the default. I'm going to open a command prompt and notice that my workstation or my host name is correct now. My host name, that is, is correct now. I can also get that this way. And I can also get it, I think, in a variable. Yep. Um, Let's check the IP address. Uh, look at that. We got configured by DHCP. Yay! All right. Um, let's check the default route. Default route is going out the way that I want it to. And um, so I also have DNS, but I won't be able to reach the network yet. Or I won't be able to reach the public network yet. Um, <clears throat> But I, what I will be able to reach is all of the networks that router one is directly configured to. Um, but because this is a 10 network, that's an internal use only network, just like the 172 network and just like the 192 networks. So 192.168.blah.blah, internal. 10 anything, internal. 172.16. Anything dot anything through 172.31 dot anything dot anything also internal. These are called the RFC 1918 networks and they're for internal use only and they will not be able to route onto the internet. However, um, we can NAT them. Uh, which is network address translation, which basically is very similar to proxying. Uh, it allows a router to take the source IP address and replace it with its own source IP address and a, and a uh, dedicated port for that conversation. Uh, and we'll set that up in hopefully just a few minutes. Let's see what the... I forgot what I was about to do next. Oh yes, I wanted to make sure that, uh, I wanted to show you that this machine can route through router one. It has no direct connection to the 172 network, 
but router one does. And router one uh, is, router one's not configured as a network yet, or router one's not configured to route yet. Uh, let's do that instead, because uh, otherwise we're not gonna see anything. All right, now just for what it's worth, I can't, right? So it's not, it's not routing. Router one is not routing. Uh, so come back out of full screen and set the workstation aside and go back to router one. Um, I'm gonna do some more uh, virtual box coolness. Uh, I'm gonna go to scaled mode. So this is host C and host C causes the machine to be scaled. Get into scaled mode, there we go. So um, that way you can maximize and minimize the window. And although it doesn't give you more real estate really, really, it does make the text bigger, which for people of a certain age is pleasant. Uh, let's get that IPv4 routing working, shall we? Uh, we're gonna check a kernel parameter now. Um, sysctl-a shows all kernel parameters. We can grep for IPv4 and we can grep for forward. Um, because it's something like that, it's IPv4 forward something. Here it is. This is the, the second line up is the one that I care about. Um, so it's ipv4.ip underscore forward. And we can take a look at it on in proc as well. Um, ignore the sys, uh, the permission denied are just because I didn't elevate my sysctl and the DL Wilson user is not allowed to look at certain keys, but he doesn't need to look at those particular keys. So. We'll look in the proc file system at the same kernel parameter. So this is going to be proc sysnet ipv4. Proc sys is the kernel parameters, and then it's net ipv4 ip ip forward. There it is. And right now it's set to a zero. So we're going to echo a one into that using that sudo t trick. Whoops. Proc sys at ipv4 ip underscore forward. Um, what's my password? You don't have to answer. You probably, well, I know you're not watching live. Um, Heather might be watching live, but you're not. So let's take a look at workstation now and see if workstation can ping. That turns on the routing, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. Something's wrong. Let's go back to this guy. He's supposed to be forwarding. He's got all his networks. Twenty-four. Oh, I misconfigured my corp network. Um, I set it as a thirty-two instead of a twenty-four. Uh, so. Uh, under ENP 0 S9, notice that it's 10, 10, 10, 254, which is correct, slash 32 instead of slash 24. So that's why my routing's not working on from workstation. So I'm going to fix this. Um, when you don't put in your network size, uh, you get a 32 which has the effect of basically shutting that network down to just me and yeah, just me. Uh, T 
take that interface down. And back up. And that looks right. Now let's see if the workstation can route. Yay, it can ping. Okay, so that's actually pinging the, that's actually pinging router one's interface on the DMZ network. Let's see if I can ping web app one. Yay, I can ping web app one. Um, if I had lots and lots of time, I would go over to web app one and then ping back to workstation one and you would see that uh, they can actually ping each other, which is nice. Um, but the Pongs uh, also do that. So going back to router one, all I've done is turn the live kernel into an IPv4 router. This does not make a permanent change. In order to make a permanent change, I have to change the system files. So those system files are in Etsy under sysctl. Um, there's a couple of sysctls. There's sysctl.d, which is configuration fragments, and sysctl.conf. The old way of doing this then was to add lines to sysctl.conf. And the new way, which um, is better if you're managing files at the file level, uh, which is a lot easier than managing lines within files, is to drop a configuration fragment into sysctl.d. So I'm going to drop a, con a new configuration fragment into sysctl.d. But first I have to get that configuration fragment. So remember, it was... The line of configuration, oh, by the way, let's uh, we'll take a quick look at these files um, and you'll see that their syntax is identical um, to Well, let's see here. User lib it says user lib has uh, some config. What I want you to see is is uh, that the configuration in these fragments is identical to the uh, syntax that comes out of sysctl. So. What that allows me to do is use sysctl's output as input to a configuration file. The one that I care about is the first line of output. Um, all the other lines are, um, are standard error, so I can throw them away with this but I don't actually have to do that because the only thing that a redirector is going to catch is um, standard out by default. So um, I'll, I'll leave this here just for visual cleanliness, but that's the line that I want, and I want to add it to a new configuration file. So Etsy, sysctl.d, and remember that um, I'm going to use my sudo t trick. Um, and 99 sysctl, uh, I could add it to the tail of that, but instead I'm going to add it to a new file. And I'm going to call it uh, 90 enable routing. 90, whoops, 90 enable IPv4 routing. All right. Um, I want to check SE Linux, uh, get context. No, that's not it. Um, oh, it's dash Z. 
ls dash z at c sysconfig sys not sysconfig at all sysctl sysctl dot d star um, so my 90 enable IPv4 routing has the wrong um, context. I want, oh, sysctl.conf and 99 sysctl.conf are the same file. That's interesting. So um, I need to get the context of sysctl.conf and apply it to 90 enable IPv4 routing so that SE Linux doesn't block the system from using 90 uh, enable routing which I don't actually think it does, but this is a good step. Um, grab a config that the system created, grab the context from that config and apply it to your own config. That way your own config will work. Or don't disturb the file, which is what we did with DHCP a moment ago. And I wish you could have seen the hand waving, that would have been awesome. Uh, so we're gonna do a chicon. We're gonna use a reference. Reference is going to be etsy sysctl.conf and the file that we're going to change the context of is sysctl.d90 enable routing.conf. There we go. Sudo. Oh, right. Sudo bang bang. Sudo bang bang. Sudo, the last thing I said. And now we should be able to take a look at those contexts and they should be correct. D, 90 enable routing, and now they're identical. They're both system configuration files. So now the router should come up automatically on reboot um, because we added that configuration file and it shouldn't get blocked by uh, SE Linux because we set the context correctly. Um, now's a good time, we've done a little bit of work to throw in a reboot. And make sure that everything comes back up correctly. Um, I'm gonna configure, I'm going to confirm the two things that I've done so far first on router one, and then I'll go over to workstation one and confirm them there by restarting that network interface. All right, so control R to search reversely through my history. And I did some catting of this. Uh, it's a one now, that's what I want. It was a, a zero before, it, uh, but my configlet caught. Uh, and I wanna make sure that DHCPD is running. And it is, it's active, good. Um, all that red stuff, by the way, about not having a subnet um, for uh, certain networks, um, I can, Actually, I can suppress that. I'll do, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Um, it's not really necessary to do it. I can ignore this error, it's noise, but it's nice to get rid of the noise. Um, dhcpd.conf, um, sudo password uh, for, Oh no, that's S3. I can't do anything with S3. Um, so the, the way that you would suppress noise, um, there's probably also noise for S8. Um, the way that you would suppress noise for an interface where you have a static configuration is you simply put an empty subnet declaration in DHCPD uh, conf. Uh, so it has a header that opens the configuration and it has the curly brace that closes the configuration, but it doesn't have any range or options for that particular subnet. And that effectively disables DHCP for that subnet without the noise error. Uh, the not having that 
subnet declaration is just as effective, but it generates this little bit of noise. Okay, so we're gonna jump off router one now and back to workstation one. We'll restart its network interface. I think. There we go. Uh, that was a restart. I don't know if you caught that little animation there, but um, that connects it. Um, so we'll go to the terminal and check the config. We've got 101 and can we still ping Web app one, we can. Okay, so the routing is still on, DHCP is still on. Um, so router one has uh, gotten this far. I think that the next step is to do the firewall work. There's DHCPD, there's the routing. Um, so the next step is to do the firewall work. So into, back to router one. Whoops, that's not router one. Where's router one? Okay, there's another way to do it. Just go to the VMware interface and double click on the machine. That'll bring it up. All right, so yum install firewall D. Hopefully this goes faster than the last one. I should have given it, given it a, yeah, I should have given it a dash Y. Oops. Once firewall D is installed, I will set the zone for each network interface. And I think I'll bounce the machine. I can't remember for sure. Let's uh, I'm gonna go back to my to-do list here. I know that I set the zone for each uh, network interface, but I don't know if there's something more that I need to do. Um, let's uh, let's let's just try setting the zone for each interface. We'll see how that works out. Um, so into Etsy sysconfig sysconfig network scripts. All right, echo zone equals work work I believe the zone names are all in all in lowercase okay that's correct sudo t dash a so that I because I don't want to clobber the file this time I want to append to it and which one am I putting in the work zone you guessed it the corp interface so now if I tail that file we should see that zone equals work has been added. So that's exactly what I wanted it to do. So now let's do the zones for the other ones. Zone equals external. And the external zone is the one that gets the automatic, auto magical NAT setup. So I'm gonna put that one on the internet interface. And finally, I'm going to put the DMZ into the DMZ zone. And that looks about right. Shift page up. When you're in a regular TTY, shift page up, scrolls up. Um, Obviously, with GNOME Terminal, it's easy. It's just the scroll bars or the mouse or whatever. Um, but this is a, for the to, from the virtual machine's perspective, this is a TTY. So these all look good. I'm going to give this box a bounce um, while I go and take a quick look at my to-do list. Oh, you know, I don't think I enabled Firewall D. I'm not sure whether it comes in automatically enabled or not. We gotta find out. It 
does go in automatically enabled yay all right so let's see if the zones took so this might actually already be working let's see we'll go to uh, web app one and try to ping no oh, first well no let's 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 just go straight for the straight for the glory names and everything name resolution worked and ping works so natting is working uh, this machine can get out to the internet even though it's on an internal network because Router 1 is performing NAT for it. And then, not relevant to this, but uh, upstream of Router 1, another machine is providing NAT for Router 1. Um, let's uh, ping Workstation 1, which is at 10.10.10.101. 10, 10, so that was that other ping that you didn't see. Um, we're going to go over to Workstation 1 really quickly, and whoops and whoops get out of there there um we're gonna go over to workstation one really quickly as i was saying and this is hard workstation one where are you there you go and make sure that it can browse the internet This will take a couple of seconds to start the web browser on it, but I should be able to get out. There we go, centos.org. Um, so I have one machine routing to the internet through another. Yay. And so... What's next? What's next on the to-do list? So now that now that uh, the firewall is up and um, got active zones, um, workstation one is on the internet, web app one is on the internet. Now we want to make sure that the web application that is available from web app one is available at um, router one's public IP address. Router one's public IP address happens to be actually a private IP address on my network, but that's not relevant. Um, I could certainly set up another port forward uh, further up on the network. What we want to do is forward port 80 from router one to uh, web app one. So I'm going to come back out of scaled mode because I don't have this command fully memorized yet. And so I'm going to need a little, going to need a little help. Oh, um, and I need to set up my router first, or my web app, I mean. Um, so going to web app one. yum dash y install web server uh, group install not not install group install I suppose now would be a good time to check and make sure that I'm still recording. Yeah. Seems to think I'm still recording. It'd be a real shame if I hadn't been, huh?
There's my web server. All right, sudo uh, system ctl status httpd. Uh, it is not started, so let's start it. And uh, it is, okay, so now it's started. Um, it is, however, disabled, so we need to enable it. And we need to add a an index.html. Let's do a quick curl. Um, okay, so it's got a website now, um, but I want a website that means more to me. Um, I like Happy Christmas better than Merry Christmas. I don't know why. Happy Christmas. Whoops. Let's see. Happy Christmas to all. Okay. And I'm going to drop that into index.html. sudo t. Whoops, t. Bar dub 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 html. And there's no index.html by default, which is why we're getting that uh, default website. Um, once we drop this in there, we should get that as the website. Let's make sure that that's browsable from off system and that there isn't a firewall blocking it. There might be. I don't know for sure that whether there is or not. Um, router one should be able to reach it and workstation one should be able to reach it. Let's just use router one for the test. 7216254101. Okay, so we've got a functioning website on web app one. Now we need to forward traffic from this machine to that machine. Um, uh, 73.149. If you look at uh, ENP0S3, uh, you'll see that its interface is 73.149. So we're going to come over here onto the host machine and browse to 73.149. And we see that we cannot connect to it uh, now. Whoops, get back to that to-do list. We get back to this list here. Um, we're going to, well, this is interesting. I didn't have to do any of this stuff on, on web app one. I'm a little surprised by that. Um, Maybe I will have to do it later. Uh, let's see. So do we got uh, we we did do this. We uh, statused it and enabled it and curled localhost. Um, I'm not going to build a nice website there, although I did build a minimal one. On router one, we're going to add that port forward. So let's go back to router one. Firewall, CMD, firewall, fire, wall. Hello, Sean. Equals external, uh, add forward port. Port equals 80 colon. Proto equals TCP colon to adder equals one seven two one 
Seven, two, sixteen, two, five, four, two, five, four. That's really hard for me to say. Or type, rather. Uh, 101. And this offense. And we'll add that permanently as well. Actually, yeah. Normally I would test it and then add it permanently, but I'm just going to go ahead and add it permanently this time. Okay, so the port 80 forward is in. I'm going to do the same thing for 443. So that way HTTPS will work as well. Uh, that should get me. Happy Christmas to all. And I, I, that would that would have been so awesome to just end right there, but instead I'm going to reboot all of these machines and make sure that this browse still works after all the machines have been uh, rebooted. So sudo reboot. Actually, let's power them all down. That way there can't be any state between them. Power that one off, and power that one off, and workstation, oops, where are you, workstation? Workstation. Power off workstation, and now we'll turn them all back on again. Start. Wang, wang, wang. Here they come. All right, um, password, password, password. What's my password? You don't know my password and you couldn't answer me without traveling to the past, which is my present. Let's go to the web browser. We're gonna try to browse web app one um, can't, I don't have any uh, network names. I don't have any name-based resolution between machines. So I do have to go to it by its IP address. But... Oh, 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 oh. Defeat. Darn it all. Um, let's see if I can even ping it. I can ping it, but I can't get to its network address or its uh, website. So it's something to do with something. Uh, web app one. Uh, so it's working from here but it's not working from there. Let's see if it's working from router one. A little troubleshooting here. It's working from there. This machine go off the network somehow? Nope, and it can ping, but it can't curl. Why? Why can't you curl? Maybe it's that firewall. 
Maybe it's that firewall after all. So let's try on web app one, let's try opening the firewall a bit. Um, CTL uh, status firewall D not found. So sudo Actually, wait a minute. Before I go too much further, let's find out if this is still working. Okay, so this one is still working. I don't think I ever did check uh, Workstation One's ability to browse that website. Um, so I'm actually attempting to uh, add functionality here, uh, which is maybe not a good idea. Um, Let's, uh, we'll try this. I don't, I, I don't know for sure that this is going to work or not. Everything's still up. Um, we're going to get back to those commands. So these commands here that I skipped, I'm um, going to open those ports on web app one and see if that makes any difference to whether or not uh, whether or not workstation one can come in. I have a tendency to think that that's not going to work. Um, so it's uh, enabled but not started. Now it's started and there's the status. Um, so sudo or yeah sudo Firewall CMD. I can't remember whether it's get services or get active services or what. But we're just going to add the service because I don't want this to take too much longer. I got uh, Christmas things to go and do. Yeah, add, it's add service. So add service HTTP and HTTPS and make that one permanent and make that one permanent. So let's see if that gets workstation. If it does, great. If it doesn't, Oh well. Nope. No dice. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have to do an addendum for this. Um, because it's definitely not not working as I had expected it to. 250, Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. So, I will do an addendum. Sorry for the disappointment. Um, the... Uh, I want to do one more thing. Whoops. Uh, echo. And to all a good night. So do T dash A var dub 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 HTML index.html. I need an exclamation point. Let's see if it works. Come back here, go over here, and 
that's it. All right. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, I'll figure out why Workstation One can't browse to. Uh, I'll figure out why Workstation One can't browse to it, and uh, I'll let you know. Um, actually, wait. Here's a little workaround. Uh, let's try. One nine two one six eight seventy three. This isn't going to work either. What's uh? What's 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 his IP address again? What was I browsing? Seventy three one forty nine. This isn't going to work either because it's going to get uh, cocked up with the uh, uh, with the with the nat. One forty nine. Let's try that again. My brain's tired now. Yeah, it's not going to work. Darn it. Okay. Well, I'll fix that part and come back. Do a follow.